Beetle Boy by M. G. Leonard. Chapter 22. The Battle of Nelson Parade. Clipping down their goldfish bowl helmets, Dankish and Craven strolled through the door of number five. On their backs, they each carried a yellow and black cylinder of poisonous gas, which led to a gun-like nozzle holstered in their belts. Virginia's lip curled with disgust and her fists clenched as she watched the two men silently from landing above. She was going to teach these beetle murderers a lesson that they'd never forget. Here we go, she whispered to Marvin, who was hanging by his back legs from one of her hair bubbles. As the front door swung shut, she swiped her hand down, signalling the attack, and pressed the start button on her stopwatch. Like an enormous black dagger, the first beetle squadron dived down, flying straight at the invaders' heads, blocking out all the light. Startled by the sudden attack, Craven and Dankish cried out as they twisted and turned, trying to swap the beetles away. A chain of dung beetles speedily rolled balls of poo forward, pushing them into position between the banisters where stag beetles waited to lift them. Once the first squadron had retreated to the hall ceiling and they had a clear shot, the dung bombs rained down. The hall quickly became a slurry pit. Virginia flapped her hands with delight at the yells of alarm and disgust that came from the muck-splattered helmets of Craven and Dankish. Unable to see out of their visors, Craven and Dankish collided and grabbed onto each other as they slid, slipped and fell. Each time they wiped their helmets, a new poo ball obliterated their view. Virginia hugged her arms tightly round her chest, barely able to contain her glee. This was the funniest thing she'd ever seen in her life, and it was painful trying not to laugh. What the hell's going on? Dankish yelled, lifting his helmet a fraction. That was the moment the Bombardier and Blister Beetles had been waiting for. They zoomed down in, the, in a phalanx towards his exposed Adam's apple, dividing before impact and skimming either side of his neck, releasing a generous spray of boiling acid onto his bare skin. Dankish shrieked like Virginia's mother when she saw a mouse and jerked his hands up, knocking the helmet off his head and onto the floor. The beetles waiting on the ceiling plummeted down into his suit like a malicious shower of hungry piranha. Dankish screamed again and again as the acid splinters and the vicious biters went to work. He fell to the floor, writhing, punching himself, trying to crush the beetles through the suit. And as he howled in agony, the stag beetle scored a direct hit, dropping a brown dung beetle into his open mouth. Virginia punched the air. Craven couldn't see what was happening because his helmet was covered in poo, but he could hear Dankish's screams. As if in slow motion, Virginia watched his hands move to the neck clips of his protective suit and snapped them open. Craven's helmet only popped open a centimetre before the Bombardier Beetle shot down for a second attack. His nasal howl soon echoed Dankish's and his helmet fell to the floor as a furious downpour of angry insects tumbled into his suit. Virginia leapt up in delight as Craven too fell to the floor screaming. Three minutes to go, peering over the banister, Dankish and Craven were squirming around in a quagmire of poo, retching and howling as they were bitten and stung. The beetles were already streaming out of the holes in the heels of their suits, making their good their escape. They had done it. They had stopped Lucretia's men. Suddenly, the front door flew open and Humphrey stumbled through it, with Pickering strapped to his back inside a cylinder harness his bone-coloured ankles dangling at awkward angles. They were wearing gas masks they'd taken from the van. Ha-ha, Pickering cried. Thought you'd keep up all the fun to yourself, did you? Well, think again, because we're here to show you how beetle killing should be done. Pickering's crows petered out as he saw Dankish and Craven. Humphrey stared. Dear God, it stinks in here, Pickering's nose wrinkled. Virginia's heart sank as the cousins charged into the hallway, and before she could stop herself from leaning too far forward, she lost her balance and clattered noisily against the banister. Humphrey raised his head, looking up. There's someone up there. It's the boy! Get him, Pickering screeched. Kill him! Virginia spun round in a panic. This wasn't in the plan. There was no one to rescue her. Humphrey tore a tank of poisonous gas from Craven's back and swung it over his shoulder to Pickering, who hugged it. It was a cracking sound and a terrible scream as Humphrey charged forward over the fallen men, ignoring the storm of beetles biting and stinging his fresh. Impervious to the deluge of dung balls fired at him, he reached the bottom of the stairs. Oh no, Virginia whispered to Marvin. What do I do now? A screech sounded behind her. It was Goliath calling out an order. Three rhinoceros beetles climbed onto his wing cases, linking their horns and serrated legs around him. Four stags ran up and grabbed onto his underbelly. Together as one, they began to roll towards the stairs, picking up Atlas, Hercules and Titan beetles, gathering momentum and beetles as they went. Virginia's jaw dropped as she watched. 
By the time the beetle ball reached the top of the stairs, it was the size of a giant space hopper. On the command of Goliath, another screech from the centre of the ball. The beetles on the outside rose up onto their back legs, linking their arms together, their vicious horns sticking out. Remembering herself, Virginia grabbed Bertolt's rockets, laying them on the floor so they poked out over the stairwell and looked at the stopwatch. 30 seconds. She pulled the lighter from her pocket, quickly lighting the fuses before sprinting into the kitchen, throwing herself down the stairs into the shop, running to the manhole and scrambling down the ladder. She rotated the handles at a furious speed, pulling the metal cover over the hole until it clunked into place and strapped the climbing harness she was wearing over her tracksuit to the ladder. Clinging to the rings of the iron ladder above Beetle Mountain, Virginia closed her eyes. Do it, Bertolt, she whispered. Get the scumbags.